Good morning, everyone. For Telesur, I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll begin this morning with news that France has begun bombing targets in Iraq early Friday. President Francois Hollande confirmed on Thursday that his country would join the United States in striking Islamic State targets. Hollande made clear that France would only provide air support, not ground troops. He added that France would bomb Iraq, not Syria. France's announcement comes after the U.S. Congress and Senate authorized President Barack Obama's new military offensive against the Islamic State on Thursday. The Senate backed legislation requesting to allowing training and arming of Syrian rebels as well as a widening bombing campaign. Despite the outcome, several senators from both parties expressed concerns in a pre-vote debate. Some worry that the measure could lead to a slippery slope of more intervention. The assistant majority leader. We go to Scotland now where voters have rejected the opportunity to break away from the United Kingdom. Results show that 55% of voters chose to stay within the UK while 45% voted to become independent. The pro-independence movement won in four of the 32 districts. The election saw a huge turnout of 85%. That's the highest in British history. Turnout even topped 90% in some areas. Pro-independence leader Alex Salmond called on his supporters to accept the, the result and for London to live up to the promises it made during the campaign. Secondly, the Unionist parties made vows late in the campaign to devolve more powers to Scotland. Scotland will expect these to be honoured in rapid course. British Prime Minister David Cameron also issued a public reaction. He welcomed the result and committed to give more tax, spending and welfare, welfare powers to Scotland. We have delivered on devolution under this government and we will do so again in the next parliament. The three pro-union parties have made commitments, clear commitments, on further powers for the Scottish Parliament. We will ensure that those commitments are honoured in full. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko met with U.S. President Barack Obama on Thursday. Obama reassured his country's support for Kiev against what he called Russian aggression. As part of that support, the U.S. granted Ukraine an aid package of $53 million meant to improve its security. However, the U.S. continues to say it will not provide arms. And to Latin America and Colombia we go, where a historic debate earlier this week, the Senate discussed links between politicians and paramilitary forces. As reactions continue, we go to our Colombia correspondent, Charles Parkinson. In the wake of Colombia's fiery Senate debate into links between paramilitaries and politicians, the country faces some hard questions about what will come of the presentation made by Senator Ivan Cepeda. The progressive senator put compelling evidence into the public record, tying former president and current senator Alvaro Uribe to paramilitarism and drug trafficking. El paramilitarismo creó un aparato. Paramilitarism created an apparatus of death and consequently an immense mountain of dead bodies, the responsibility for which arrived right to the pinnacle of power in Colombia. Sobre los cuales se llegó a la cúspide del poder en Colombia. Most of the claims put forward by Cepeda were backed by documentary evidence or testimonies from ex-officials, demobilized paramilitaries or extradited drug traffickers. Among them were Uribe's ties to drug baron Pablo Escobar, involvement in the establishment of the brutal Block A Metro paramilitary organization, and ties to key paramilitary leaders and drug clans, one of which allegedly helped fund his successful presidential campaign in 2002. For Alvaro Villarraga, who helped draw up the country's 1991 constitution and has studied the armed conflict for decades, the evidence put forward demands genuine action. Este tipo de denuncias presentadas sobre this type of denouncements about alleged direct responsibility for paramilitarism and drug trafficking, I believe, constitute a practical demand of Colombian justice. That's to say, these documents must be collected and must be pushed on to the institutions responsible for addressing the issue of impunity. The question now is how Colombia's institutions will respond. 
This debate has highlighted a dark side of Colombian politics that still persists today, demanding a full and independent investigation into the evidence put forward by Senator Ivan Zapeda. Charles Parkinson, Telesur in Bogota, Colombia. And thanks to Charles. And now we go to Ecuador, where President Rafael Correa has announced what he calls a new stage in his government. He hopes to form a new broad progressive alliance of social movements and political parties. The Ecuadorian president promised a radicalization of the citizens' revolution. The new body will push for new constitutional changes to strengthen labor rights and widen access to Social Security. President Correa highlighted that the changes are part of similar leftist shifts in the region since the victory of late President Hugo Chavez in Venezuela in 1998. The changes have already faced backlash from those in the opposition. The United Nations Security Council adopted a resolution on Thursday labeling the Ebola outbreak in Africa a threat to international peace and security. The Cuban delegation responded by calling on all countries to help fight the deadly virus by sending a large multinational medical brigade. Cuba is sending over 100 health care workers to West Africa. Cuba has sent 300 doctors abroad over the past half century. We end on a cultural note and a uniquely South African ballet. The Johannesburg Ballet has added a new sparkling touch to the ever-popular Nutcracker. It stands to Tchaikovsky's famous score but is set in the Kalahari Desert and features rock paintings and traditional healers. The head of the ballet says he hopes Nutcracker reimagined will attract a new young and black audience to classical dance. More on those stories and plenty others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle. Hope you have a great day.